So this demo is going to be focusing on, and we're going to show the secure access user experience. And we're going to highlight several of the main capabilities of Zero Trust, primarily establish trust, enforce trust-based access, and continually verify trust. Okay, so here we have a user that has opened their laptop for the first time for the day. They have a drive map shared to a window share that's in the data center. And what we're doing right now is showing the user and device trust happening to grant access to that window share through VPN-less secure access. So this user is performing authentication not with a password, an MFA, but rather passwordless authentication using a biometric. So they've been granted access in the back end. What you didn't see was that check to make sure the device trust is also there and they're able to now access their files within the data center. From here, the user is actually going to launch their application portal. So this is, this is where all of their applications reside, make it very easy to go access the applications. This user had now has already verified the user trust, verified the device trust, so they're not going to need to provide those credentials again. They're already being provided through single sign-on. But in the back end that we didn't see, that device trust is still happening. We also have the ability of managing our devices here, the, the devices that are providing the biometric access there for passwordless. They're opening one of the applications right now, the same thing, through single sign-on. They're not having to provide credentials, but those device checks are still happening on the back end, and we can see that they were able to access their Salesforce application here. So what happens, however, if that security posture changes? We mentioned continuously verifying trust previously, and now we have the ability if, the, if something on that device changes, i.e. in this case, the user disabling their firewall, which we're going to go ahead and do here. And once that firewall has been disabled, they're going to go ahead and access that application again, or attempt to access that application again. So again, because we're continually verifying trust, that device posture has now changed, and when they go to access the application, they're going to be prompted here and told that their, their device no longer meets policy. And in this case, we can see that the firewall is not enabled, and it provides a very easy self-remediation process for them to go through, follow those easy steps to, to turn on the firewall again, because that's why they were denied. Once they do so, all they have to do is go back and refresh the application. So we'll close these windows out here, of course. Refresh the application, and now they're granted access again. This time, obviously, the device passed posture checks, so they're able to get access. So now the user actually wants to access an application within the data center, a web application. This particular case is not configured for single sign-on itself, so it can't perform these device checks and user checks that we're doing, but we're able to protect that through VPN, the secure access as well. Same thing, the user was checked, the device was checked, we're granted access. As I mentioned before, this is not performing single sign-on, so they perform their own authentication, but we have protected that access through VPN, the secure access. And we can see that they were then granted access to the application. So now we're going to see this user needing to access a remote desktop application within the data center. So they're going to open their RDP client. They're going to connect to a remote desktop share. But this time, this is also going to be going through VPN-less secure access, providing the same thing. We didn't have to provide user credentials again. Single sign-on took care of that but the device checks are still happening on the back end before granting them access to that remote desktop session. So once that pops up here, we can see that we have that remote desktop session active and alive, and they can op open their applications here or open their files or whatever the case may be. We can see now we have remote access to RDP through vpn -less secure access. So at this point, we're gonna demonstrate how we have the secure client as well on this desktop. So this secure client has several different components in it. One, we can see that obviously VPN is a component of this for the times that we need to access through VPN. Secure endpoint, protecting the endpoint via from malware and various other things. And umbrella protecting with, as a secure web gateway to make sure that that endpoint is protected regardless of where this user is in the world. So we can see through this test quickly that it is protected by umbrella for one. And we'll go now to try and demonstrate accessing a site that would host malware. 
or phishing in this case. And phishing in this case, we can see was blocked by Cisco Umbrella. The next one then, of course, being the malware test, we'll click on that URL. And we can see that Umbrella is protecting this user. Again, regardless of where they are, remote, on-premise, it doesn't matter. The same security policy applies. So sometimes there are use cases where we still need to be VPN in to access resources. So if we establish this VPN connection, the same thing happens. Single sign-on's happening. User has already been identified. Device checks are happening on the back end. We've obviously passed because we remediated those problems before. And we can see that I do have access to the VPN. So let's go ahead and close that. I mentioned previously that shared signals can be used as well to help with that continuously verifying trust. So and we're gonna go back to the central and we're going to open an application. This device now has been infected with malware, but we, didn't, we did not have those checks turned on before. So as we can see, this is being shared. This device is now being blocked because there is an endpoint compromise on here. That was a shared signal. We're continuously verifying that trust. Because this endpoint has malware, we were able to then stop that from accessing applications. So now let's see what happens if a user decides to use a less secure form of authentication. We've been watching this. We've been doing password authentication, which uses biometrics. At this point, this user is going to sign out, but this time sign in not using passwordless and a biometric, but rather attempt to do this via a password authentication. So we're going to cancel the authentication attempt that's going to want to use Windows Hello. You're being prompted, would you like to log in with the password? Because it is an option enabled right now on here. But instead of a standard MFA push, we're doing what's called a verified push. So rather than a standard just clicking push and yep, I'm, I'm allowing this access, I'm forcing the user to have to put in a code that they're seeing from the application into their mobile device for verification for multi-factor instead of just hitting push. So this eliminates a lot of the push fatigue issues that we see out there. And with that, that concludes this demo showing user and device trust, and I look forward to seeing you in future demos.